Hello and welcome again to the not so weekly weekly news from RC Model Reviews on YouTube. And a few things to talk about this week. First, if you're buying stuff from Hong Kong, then be prepared for a bit of a delay. It's the Chinese New Year, or the remnants of the Chinese New Year, has left the postal system fairly clogged up. And apparently Hong Kong Post have implemented some new security procedures to try and catch lipos and bombs and things that might be sent through the mail. So that means that even after the companies like Hobby King deliver their packages to Hong Kong Post, it can be a week, sometimes two weeks, before it actually gets on an aeroplane and starts heading in your direction. So be aware. Apparently it's not Hobby King's fault, it's not the other supplier's fault, it's Hong Kong Post. And I've been using the other option on Hobby King, which is the Singapore Speed Post, and that seems to be working pretty well for me. Uh, the delivery times are good, and we'll find out. I've just ordered a new bunch of stuff. We'll see whether it gets caught up in that same snag as the Hong Kong Post product. Hopefully it won't, because there's stuff in there that I want to review and tell you all about. And I've spent a pretty penny, I can tell you. Now, <clears throat> I get a lot of emails about FPV, because I've done the FPV videos, and there's a lot more of FPV videos to come. A lot of people have emailed me and said, I've got a 5.8 gig system and it's not really doing very good. I'm getting maybe 100, maybe 200 yards range, and that's it. It goes all snowy, can't see a thing. Well, you've seen my videos, no doubt, of the Hobby King EPP model, which I've flown out to 1.8 kilometers on one of my videos. And just the other day, I flew it out to over two kilometers, at to a height of 3,000 feet above ground level. And it was still giving me a reasonably good picture. So. How come I'm able to get this massive range out of 5.8 gigs that other people don't seem to be getting? Well, it's all down to the way you set your FPV system up. Um, it's easy enough just to throw the transmitter in the plane and, and just set things up on the ground quickly, but you won't get good results if you do that. You've got a few very important factors you've got to consider when you set up an FPV system for video. I'm going to do a video showing you how to do it and what not to do. So hopefully those people that have emailed me with their problems will find they can get a lot more range if they follow some simple tips and advice. So keep an eye out for that if you're trying to use 5.8 gigahertz video and not having a lot of luck. In the same vein, I'm doing a series of uh, articles and reviews coming up where I'll be comparing 5.8 with 900 megahertz. We'll take the model, we'll fly it out with 5.8, see how far we can go before we lose the video signal. I'll put exactly the same powered 900 milliwatt, a uh, 900 megahertz transmitter in the same plane, fly along the same course, and we'll do a comparison. So I'm waiting for the 900 megahertz stuff to come from Hobby King. That's that package I was talking about just before. When that arrives, I'll make that video up, and we'll do some comparisons so you can choose for yourself which is the best frequency to use if you want to do FPV. Now. The telemetry system that I've been developing for the Turnigy, oh sorry, the FreeSky, the FreeSky 2.4 system. Now, people have been saying, when's it coming? When's it coming? Well, I've been working hard on it, and I didn't want to release it half pied. I didn't want to roll it out while there were still problems with the software, perhaps, or the old bugs, and it wasn't that easy to build. So I've been carefully refining this product, and I can tell you it will be out very, very soon. So you will have the telemetry system you can build yourself, the hub that goes in your model, and the dashboard that goes on your transmitter. And the voice system that plugs in your ear and tells you how high you are, what your voltage is, and gives you all sorts of warnings without you having to constantly look down at your transmitter. Now, FreeSky themselves have, I see a picture on their website, they're releasing their own hub, which is excellent because not everyone, in fact, very few people will want to build their own, and if you can buy it, great, that's excellent because not all those people out there want to mess around with soldering irons and bits of circuit board and components. So it'll be, both systems will be available and it'll, you can make your pick, you can choose what you want. If you want to do it yourself, you can. If you want to buy it off the shelf, you'll be able to do that too. It'll be exciting times when that stuff comes out. And as I say, the DIY system, very, very soon now. T-shirts. Remember, I said, if you send me a T-shirt, I will wear it. I won't endorse it, but I'll wear it. Well, look at this. Yes, the blue T-shirt company sent me this blue T-shirt. No, they didn't, it's my own one. But there are T-shirts on the way. I've had emails from people saying, we're sending you a T-shirt. And I'm saying back to them, well, I'll wear it. So if you've got a T-shirt you wanna see on my chest here, send it to me, I'll put it on. Free advertising, how's that? Okay, um, another thing that I've been asked a lot is how do you install a 2.4 gigahertz receiver in, um, in a model? And I guess when you've been doing it a while, you take it for granted that other people will know how to install their receivers and their stuff in their model. But the fact is, a lot of people don't. New entrants to the hobby don't have a clue. What do I do with this aerial thing? Where does it go? Can I cut it off? 
Those are the questions you're asked. So I'm going to do a, a brief video and a web page showing you how to properly install a 2.4 gigahertz receiver in the average model. I'll do an electric install, I'll do a nitro install, and I'll do a gas install for those that have got the big petrol planes, show you where to put the aerials and how to wire it up and all the things you've got to watch for to make sure it's a reliable installation and that your, your model isn't going to crash because the radio stops working. Keep an eye out for that one. This week, I have to say a little more about DSM-X. DSM-X, people have been emailing me on that subject as well. Is it any good? Does it hop? What does it mean to me? Well, um, I can't answer all of that. I know it hops. I know it's frequency agile because they've told us it's frequency agile. And that's very good. And another thing they've told us, which is also very good, is it has randomly selected spreading codes. Now, what's a spreading code? Well, have a look on my channel. I've just done a video a little while ago about how spreading codes work and how they enable two systems to operate on the same frequency at the same time. Now, if you want to have a look at that video, if you've already seen it, you'll know what spreading codes are all about. Well, one of the good things about the Spectrum that I really like, the new DSM-X, not the DSM-2, the new DSM-X, is that it randomly selects different spreading codes depending on your GUID. So when you're flying, you may, use, may be using different spreading codes to the guy next to you with his DSM-X system, even though you may be using the same frequencies on the band at the same time. Brilliant, excellent, good move by Spectrum. This is, in fact, a good little move forward, a good little advance in the technology, and I'm very pleased to see it. It's starting to look as if DSMX may shape up as a really, really, really good system. But we won't know until we test it. What are the chances that we'll be able to test it? Well, I have to find somebody who's got a DSMX system that I can borrow because Horizon are very unlikely to send me one. I don't know why, but they're very unlikely to send me one. So I will be catching a borrow or whatever as soon as I can get my hands on one and we'll put it up. And that brings up an interesting thing too because I reviewed a lot of 2.4 systems a while back, but the market's changing, it's constantly evolving. We've got DSM-X, over in Europe we've got the HOT system, which is a new, from Graupner I think it is, and Jetty have launched a new transmitter, wonderful new transmitter, lots of knobs and dials and levers, it looks wonderful, it looks you know, big enough to put your coffee cup on too. And I will probably be looking at that and seeing whether these new systems have any benefits and whether the existing systems are still able to cope with the rapidly changing 2.4 gigahertz band. Are FreeSky and Hitec still the number one systems when it comes to providing a reliable link? Or has DSM-X overtaken them already? Only way to find out is to stick them on the bench and give them a shot. That's what I'll be doing as soon as I can. Um, so there'll also be a revisited as so I'll go over all the old systems, see what's changed, see if they're still up to scratch, and we'll do a new 2.4 gigahertz shootout coming up very soon on RC Model Reviews. And that's about it, except I have to say, my camera is not working very well. If you looked at my video showing you how to install this DIY kit in this Turnergy radio, you'll see that the audio was crap because my camera is packing up and I've had to do a lot of editing to try and fix the audio, a bit of overdubbing to make the audio work and it's just been a nightmare. So I'm going to ask if anybody out there is in the camera business, the video camera business. If you are, then please drop me a line because we may be able to do a bit of a deal. A lot of people watch these videos, and a lot of people are influenced by what they see on these videos. So what I'd like to do is say, if you have a suitable video camera that you would like to donate to RC Model Reviews, then I will in turn use that camera and give you a big plug on the front and the end of every video. So you will get a lot of advertising to people who come here to find out whether stuff is good. And if the camera works, they'll be able to see it. And if I like it, I'll tell them. So, Bear that in mind, if you run a camera shop or you know someone who runs a camera shop and you want to donate a camera to RC Model Reviews, then please, please do so. Maybe even a HD camera so we don't have this fuzzy standard definition that you've got now. Well, that's it for another week. Stay tuned. Oh, I've just come back from three days of filming a very large jet event here in New Zealand at Takara. In fact, just outside the door here. And there were a lot of exciting things happened in that jet event. There was uh, the world's largest RC model of a MiG-25 fighter. It's 14 feet long and has two huge turbines and it was built by an 18 year old uh, student. Now, video is already up of that, the, the unpacking, the assembly and the first flight and a little sneak preview of the subsequent flight, which wasn't quite so good. So go and have a look at that on my XJet channel. You'll also find coming up in a couple of days time, a rather exciting video of the big A-10 Warthog, which is a uh, 10, meter, a 10 foot wingspan, uh, caught on fire caught on fire in the air and did they get it down? Um, what happened to it? What's left of it? Go to my XJet channel and you will find out, but that's enough free plugs for my other ventures. Uh, thank you for watching RC Model Reviews. If you feel inclined, you may subscribe. If you feel inclined, you may donate a small amount of money so that I can continue to buy all this stuff and test it out for you. In the meantime, thank you. I will see you again on RC Model Reviews.
on YouTube.